here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all is going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. Today I have a little lesson on melodic soloing and some tricks and tips that can really add a bit of melodicism to your soloing. And melodic soloing is something that we all kind of aspire to in some way and love. You know, I mean, who doesn't love some of our classic melodic solos that we really can almost sing? They're like a song within a song, you know, like... For instance, like David Gilmour's solo in Comfortably Numb, or Slash's solo in uh, Sweet Child of Mine, Jimi Hendrix's solo in Hey Joe, you know, the, the Eagles soloing on the end of Hotel California. I think it's a combination of things that really give a solo its melodic sensibilities, you know. Of course, there's note choice, which is part of it, but then there's the player's technique, right? How they're bending the strings, how they're digging in how they're attaching their phrases together. Melodic phrasing, so important, right? The use of space. And you heard me at the beginning of this lesson, really bending notes and holding them and letting them, you know, kind of ring out. And that use of space is very important. It's not just the notes that you play, it's the notes that you don't play. And also, you know, those small repeated melodic phrases, those few little notes that you put together in a melodic way and then repeat it and vary it. And remember too, when I'm going over all the, you know, kind of heady stuff in this lesson, the scales and then why they work, remember too that, you know, I do that to give you a jump off point to kind of just get you started, right? Because if you really think about it, music is really more than just the logical application of scales and notes, right? There's that um, emotional aspect to music that we want to get across and that's kind of almost the more important thing but we got to have a place to start and we got to know what works and why and then we can kind of do our own thing with it right and in the beginning i was playing over a simple two chord jam track it was in the key of e minor and the chords were just an e minor to a b minor and that's it right and i'll tell you how you can get this jam track um, to practice over, just click on that link below and I will send you this jam track and five more six killer sounding tracks so you have that musical application to apply what you're learning. I'll send you that and I'll send you a coinciding ebook that takes the tracks and breaks them apart and explains what works over them and why. And also another ebook on scales and scale applications so you have some, you know, ammunition. The first thing is, you know, you have to kind of decide, you know, the kind of sounds you want to create because it's all about the sounds. And over this melodic kind of sounding track, I wanted to do something kind of sad and mournful melodic sounding. So I chose E natural minor or E aeolian mode for quite a bit of it. And you could use that over both chords because that relates to all, as does E minor, pentatonic, and blues. And I was doing a little of that too. And the other thing I was doing is I was changing what I was doing over each chord. Over the E minor chord, I was using E minor pentatonic, E natural minor. And then over the B minor, I was using B natural minor, B aeolian, or B minor pentatonic. And if you look at the two keys, E minor and B minor, they're very close, there's only one note difference. So the E natural minor scale I was using, the notes in E natural minor, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, back to E. The notes in B natural minor, B aeolian, are the same except there's a C sharp instead of a C. If I was to play a B natural minor scale, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, and back to B. That whole shape looks like this. Right? B natural. 
actual minor. Also, you could use B minor pentatonic over the B chord, B minor pentatonic in blue. <laughs> You could use E minor pentatonic. I was using a little of that E minor pentatonic in blue. Right? And I was using some other shapes too. And if you get that, you know, click on that link. The, the, the scale book in the Jam Track Coach has all these scales diagrammed out. So be sure you click on that link because you get to see these on paper and it really helps. So let me show you a few kind of tricks when you're soloing and especially when you're soloing over one minor to a five minor. Remember the five chord in the key of E minor, right? Or in the key of E, your five is a B, all right? That's very important That's because that's going to steer you to certain things. And it's very easy if you're not sure how to find out what's the five chord in a certain key. Very simple. Just put your first finger on the root note, like in the key, like E. So we want to put our first finger on the low E string, on E. And then your fifth of that will be one string down and two frets over on the A string, B. E, B is the fifth, right? That's a little easy little trick to determine the fifth if you're, if you're not sure. So let's have a little quiz. Let's say you're soloing over the one minor and five minor. So in the key of G minor, what is the fifth? The answer is D, D minor, right? Because if you put your first finger on the low E string on the key G, you go one string down and two frets over D. Very simple, right? So what I was doing was using the scale I just showed you, E minor, right? And I was playing a repeated kind of melodic lick. And, you know, just kind of varying it, right? But see how that's right out of that E minor scale? And I'm using the half steps. That's a big thing. Use those half steps. You can almost hear the melodicness in those half steps. Okay, now when you're doing that, that's that E natural minor. Notice B natural minor is almost right in there, except we have this note, that C sharp, instead of the C natural. So what I, and what you could do is this will work no matter what key you're in positionally. Over the E minor chord. Then when the B minor comes up, just go. You put your fourth finger on that B string and you bend that note up. And why that's so powerful, such a powerful trick, is because you're bending to the root of the next chord. That will always be the root I'm bending up to the B. Right? And that will work in any key. So stay in that one position in natural minor, no matter what key you're in. And, here goes. and then on that chord change, you nail that bending up to the root. So that's a cool little trick, bending to the root, but staying in the same position, right? Okay. And I did that with a few different things. And then I went... Right, when the chord changed the second time, again, if you stay here, if you just want to stay in this E natural minor, when the B comes up, grab that C sharp and bend it to the D. And that's a very powerful bend. Because you're bending that ninth up to the flat third. And again, the theory, if, if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. You can go to our website and, and I have lots of lessons on music theory if you want to study it. But I kind of just want to get you playing melodically and having fun, right? We can do the theory later. There's a reason why that sounds so good though, that note choice, right? So. When you're playing over that B chord, bend that ninth. That's the ninth. You're bending that second or ninth, that C sharp. So if you play, see I'm outlining that E minor chord, that E minor chord. Do you hear the change? I'm kind of outlining the chords with my playing. Because that note, now we're in the key, we're in the, over the B minor chord. Now that's that. And you could release that right back to that B note. 7th fret high E string. Another thing I was doing in that 
that solo was I was playing pretty much the same exact thing, but in different places over each chord. For instance, over the E minor chord, I played this. I was playing this, sliding into this cool double stop over the 12th, at the 12th fret. And then I was adding that ninth, like E natural minor up here. Right, you could think of that as that, or you could think of it as E minor pentatonic, just adding that ninth or second. Right, ending on E. Now the chord changes to the B minor. Do that same exact thing, but just move it down to your B natural minor or B minor pentatonic position. But again, we're ending, we're kind of outlining that C sharp note, because that's the difference between the E minor and the B minor, right? And resolving it to the root note. Also, later in the solo, playing simple pentatonic licks. And this is a great little trick. If you only know the pentatonic scale, just move that over each chord and you'll get that movement, but play something melodic with a little bend, like I was playing this lick. Right, where I was doing a hammer on. And I was bending that flat third. Here I'm bending with my first finger. I'm just giving it a little bend on that G string, the G note. See? And then lots of vibrato. And you can play that double stop, the 12th fret G and the B string. Now the chord changes. But now I'm moving it to B minor pentatonic, so I'm doing a hammer between the seventh and the ninth fret, and I'm doing that bend on the seventh fret on the G sharp. And you could hammer once, hammer twice, do a trill, but listen for those chords to change, and then try the same lick over each chord. device is to do multiple bends on that same note. For instance, over that B chord I was doing notice you bend up and release but um, I'm bending it to pitch each time you can do that on each chord. Another thing I did was when I had the note bent up, slow release gives it that crying. Crying kind of sound, and that's a really nice melodic little trick. And remember, a lot of this is just those short phrases, just a couple of notes. where I'm just taking two, three, four notes and then changing the order of them, but a lot of vibrato, a little bending, lots of space, right? And just with those two little scales, you can do so much. Through this lesson, I was using this, which is a guitar made by Universum. It's a Mariana Special Reserve. Um, Universum makes, hand makes their premium guitars in the Ukraine and they make some incredible stuff. And I urge you to check them out. I mean, look at this guitar, it's just beautiful. They're doing some really creative things there with their guitar engineering and their guitar building. They really sound great, they play great, and they look great. I hope this lesson on melodic tips and tricks helps you along in your guitar journey. Give it a try. Um, be sure to practice over jam tracks. Click that link below. I'll send you the jam tracks for free and the eBooks. Also remember, please subscribe to the channel. That really helps us to keep bringing the content and we so appreciate your support over the years. If you like the video, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know what you'd like to see, how you like this lesson, what you'd like to see in coming lessons. Right, I'm David Taub, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com and remember, 
Your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care and rock. Yeah.